Hi guys, this is Pestilian. Welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, I'm covering the max level hideout and if it is worth it, I'm going to cover what uh, the benefits are, how you can make some money from it, and yeah, just give you the overall gist of if you should level it up and the profits from it. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. All right, so I'm not really sure how long this video is going to go for, so I'm going to give the TLDR to anyone out there who just wants to go, uh, should I upgrade my hideout or not? And the answer is yes. But that information is not enough for you to actually benefit in the in the, the grand scheme of things. There's a little bit more to it. So stick around if you want to know more. Uh, I don't usually say stuff like this, but to be honest, if you just want to upgrade it or not, yes, you should be upgrading it and you can figure out why later. But um, the the there is a lot more to it. So let's start off with uh, the skills. Now, um, hopefully uh, Frankie or Brit They'll put me in a way that you can actually see these skills because I can't get it to come up any uh, any higher. But there are two skills for the hideout being the hideout management skill and the crafting skill. Now, as you upgrade your hideout, you get points in uh, hideout management. For every upgrade of any of the uh, areas of the hideout, you get 20 skill points in hideout management. And then um, any time that you've got fuel, water, the water filter, or the air filter activated and it's consu being consumed in the hideout, you're leveling up your hideout management skill. Now, why is the hideout management skill important? Well, the factor is it increases all percentage bonuses from zones by 44% of their value. And that's at level 44. And at max level, it's 50%. And then when you get to level 51, uh, it lets it so you can uh, get more Bitcoins or hold on to more Bitcoins and uh, put more fuel stuff in. And it's just an overall, just a better benefit. Uh, makes it a lot easier. So you don't have to log in as often. On the crafting side of things, this one's leveled up by uh, every time you do a craft, you get 2.5 skill points. And then if, as long as you do a different craft on the same station, you'll uh, get 2.5 skill points again. If you do the same one over and over again, there's diminishing returns. So make sure you do rotate it. And the short of it is, as you use uh, the crafting skill, you'll level it up and then things will become faster to craft. And um, yeah, so it'll just uh, increase the speed of which things are happening. And then stuff like the water filter that gives you the super water. Um, if you've got crafting leveled up and the hideout management skill, it actually consumes less of it and, uh, and gives you like a, a better return a re return of investment. So that's covering the skills. At max level crafting, you can craft two things on the same like station or spot within the hideout at the same time. So that's that out of the way. I'm gonna go into the hideout now. Uh, I've deliberately not uh, started crafts on absolutely everything. So that way I can explain things more to you. Um, now the shooting range, it doesn't consume any of your ammunition when you're shooting at the shooting range. I don't think I have any guns on me at the moment, but I'll just quickly go over and check. I do. So I've also shoot it a couple of times. This is the uh, 338 Lapua. Um, noise warning, I guess. Put that in before that, please. Frank, you're a Brit. Um, and now that's out of ammunition. But if I press, press escape, go out, go back in, try a weapon again, and I can use, the use it again. All right. You, you don't consume your ammunition at all. So... Um, it's a good way of just testing recall patterns or if you want to try a mod out or just see what a sight looks like on top of a gun, you can use the shooting range for that. Now, the workbench, you can do a lot of crafts in the workbench that will make you a lot of money. Um, if you want the basic two that I do, um, now this is, you're going to have to do spend a little bit of time working out the profits and that. There are other people putting out videos out there to, um, you know, explain which one gives you the most amount of profit and stuff like that. But personally, the easiest craft you can do in this uh, whole thing is the green gunpowder. And all you need to do is you go to Peacekeeper, you buy the M67 grenades, then you go to Prepper, you buy the smoke grenades, and then you make green gunpowder. And I, just, I this is one of the two I do. Um, and then the other one I do is the 762 by 39 BP ammunition. Uh, I use the green gunpowders that I craft, and I buy blue ones to, uh, to fill the gap. Pretty much gives me an unlimited supply of BP ammunition. And I just have this going 24-7. I, I craft greens and uh, then chuck it with the blue and make some more. Every now and then I do have to resupply by buying a few greens as well. Um, there are heaps of beneficial ways of making money in the hideout. But I just like this craft because I actually use it. So that's one I do. Uh, I'm sure there's more that you can do. But they do make you good money. Now over to the lavatory. So just to correct one thing on the uh, on the work workbench. You do need to have the generator on to use the workbench, whereas the lavatory, you don't. Now, for the lavatory, if you want to level up crafting, this one's super easy. You just go the uh, the gas mask, the GP5 gas mask, 
takes one uh, it takes two minutes technically but as you level up your crafting skill it goes faster uh, and then the other one i use is the tp now oh one last thing made a mistake before the other way the crafting skill is leveled up is for every hour that something is crafting you get one skill point so for example the scav junk box here it goes for eight hours you'd get eight skill points over that period of time now so the other craft i do is the paper i turn into toilet paper and i just sell these to vendor i don't really care about making profit on these ones but if you do want to make profit your scav junk box makes you heaps of money once you have shooter born in heaven done and you can buy the uh mag cases for uh 289k you make that you buy these 289k you buy them three times over the day over the the resets whilst you're uh making your toilet paper and, and and air filters and then after that once you've got three of them you make yourself a scav junk box chuck it up on the flea market you boost your flea market rep as you're putting large amounts of money through the flea market and then on top of that you are also um making probably about 400,000 rubles on average it depends uh, it depends on the day, really. It can it can vary. Now, both the workbench and lavatory are also really great for getting uh, items for quests. Simple examples would be, say, um, the 60-round mags, Blackhawk rigs. Uh, what else we got here? If you need WD-40-100 uh, WD mils, like there's just heaps of items. If you need for quests, you can get them. Um, corrugated hose is another big one. Same with lavatory. Now, moving over to the intelligence center, um, this one's already been crafting. Now, the two crafts that I love to do on this, and it's not the most profitable, it's just, I just like getting intel for some reason. So what I do is I get the uh, the GP, sorry, the, the broken G phone, the GPX phone, and then SAS drive, uh, sorry, SSDs. And I make uh, the secured flash drives, and then I just turn them into uh, folders with intel. Now, at the moment, these aren't really making me profit. I just use the intel to do the scav runs in the, uh, in the scav run section of the hideout. But if you want to make profit, graphics cards right now is pretty much the way to go. Uh, as long as you can get these cheap, you try your best to get them at the cheapest time of the of the, uh, of the day. Um, and that's generally when I think the most amount of people are playing. It, it, I could be wrong with that. But just over the day, if you can pick up something cheap, and, and the way you profit the most is if you go into a raid and you die with some of these items in your container, um, then you're making a lot more money out of it. Whereas if you find them in raid and you survive, you're probably better off chucking a lot of these items up on the flea market. Um, so yeah, but if you're leveling up crafting, I just go Intel and flash drives back and forth. The uh, you need the three flash drives to make the Intel, and you get three flash drives from from doing the uh, other craft. Really simple there. Stash upgrade increases your stash size. If you've got EOD, this will be already level four. And then as the the variations of the um, game vary, like additions go down, you have a smaller stash size for each one. Um, so if you have a standard account you do want to level this up you need a level two to get the max hideout on everything else anyway but um you will want to level it up over the time and it's a bit of a money sink so i guess it's good for the economy i'm going to go uh down this way and i'll finish at the bitcoin farm and explain uh the bitcoin farm from there so security and vents are purely just money sinks they're just there to help level up other things within the hideout um so don't stress too much about those you do have to get them done though now the scav case if you want to make pure cash uh, this is the 85,000 ruble one. I just do this one. Um, but if you want to uh, gamble for keys, then you want to do the Intel runs, which is why I make the Intels. And if you want to get streamer items, then do the moonshines. Generally, it's more RNG based uh, if you're going to make profit or not over the Intel and the moonshines. But the cash is um, a very consistent way of making money. And that's generally the one I do. Solar panels reduces the amount of uh, fuel consumption based off uh, your, your generator which is the next one. And so my fuel lasts for 61 hours. And the higher that my hideout management and crafting skills go, that the uh, more fuel that I get. So the, right now where there's that fuel shortage, um, I don't really have to stress about that. I've got 330 hours. What's that, like nine days? No, less than that, sorry. Like six days or something without I having to worry about it. Actually, it's, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like 13, 14 days. It's a long time. That's the point I'm trying to make. Like 14 days um, before I have to worry about fuel. Moving along, nutrition unit. This is by far my favorite thing to craft in the hideout. All right, and and I just did the armor S to F tier uh, list and people were like, why is the M1 rig on level on an S tier? This craft right here is the reason why. For uh, a super water and a silicon tube, you can make eight aquamaris, which barter trades into two M1 rigs because it's four aquamaris for the M1 rigs. So what you do 
is you get the water collectors. You make it from the water filter, turns into super water, then you buy some silicon tubes, and then bam, you've got yourself two level four armored rigs. You don't need to wear a backpack, and you can. It's got plenty of room to do money runs. And then if you uh, say on a map like reserve, you can take the sewer extract. The same on interchange, you can take the no backpack extract on that, making you have a quick and easy way of getting out. And it generally comes back from insurance a lot. Uh, because it's a 4x4 rig when it's in a backpack, most people don't want to loot it. So unless you die by someone who's got less gear than you or a, a lesser, um, say they're going in with like basic, really basic gear and you get a little bit unlucky and you die, you're just bad at the game, I guess. Um, then uh, you generally get your rigs back. So it works really well. Um, I've been rotating. I can't remember which one it was the last one I did. But the other one I do is I make sugar. Now, this is not that profitable, but the main reason I make the sugar, uh, which I'll do it right now, is so I can uh, get the moonshine. And we'll get to that in a minute. So nutrition, I rotate between the sugar and the aquamaris via the uh, super waters. And that's what I do every time. Air filtering unit. Is this one worth doing? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. If you were like at the start of the video and you said the t I said the TLDR, this is the one of the major reasons why. Um, I'll put up some screenshots. Oh, actually, I won't put the screenshots up because it, it is proof, but you, you'll take my word for it, right? I did some tests when I was at level 50 strength with max level endurance. One without the uh, the fuel filters in, sorry, the air filters in, and one with. And um, with the testing, after one like sprint, without the filter, I went up eight skill points in strength, doing a full sprint in my endurance whilst overweight. When I had the filter in, my first full sprint gave me 13 skill points. Right after three full sprints from either, from both, the non-filter one gave me 12 and a half skill points in total, and then with with the filter, it was about 17 skill points or 16 skill points. So I got an extra four to five skill points in total by uh, having the air filter in, and that was just in the first four or five sprints. So and this physical skills, this isn't just like the strength skill. This is heaps of things. This is like we'll go over here. We'll go physical. Strength, endurance, vitality, health, uh, stress resistance, metabolism, and immunity. So the higher level you have your hideout management because of the uh, the buff from hideout management, the higher percentage it gives you in, as a bonus to you leveling up your skills, which uh, if you haven't noticed, if you look at any of the like the sweaty Chad streamers out there that run around like crazy on their main accounts all day with meta gear, they're zooming. They're absolutely zooming. And that's because they got max level strength and max level endurance. And it, it looks like they're... they're almost speed hacking it actually looks like they're almost speed hacking if you were going up against him you're like what the hell is going on so yes definitely um the one thing about these are they are quite expensive over time um so if you do have your bitcoin farm up uh that can help make you money you can loot these in uh reserve quite easily but ultimately i would say if you're going to have a big gaming session of tarkov chuck one of these in if you're only going to do one raid probably not um so yeah if you got like a saturday free and you're going to play for the whole day make sure you get one of these in because it will help you out quite considerably over that session. Next up, uh, we've got heating and rest space. These are just like, they do give you like bonuses, but really it's not anything that's too crazy. Besides um, the maximum energy, giving you 10 extra energy, it can help you out sometimes. The library is the, the next really big one that you want to have. There's two reasons behind it. Now, the additional rate experience, 21.6%. So at the end of the raid, it'll say if your survival go 1.5 times, but it also says for me 1.26 times as well. Or one, sorry, 1.216 at times as well. Anyway, um, it doesn't really affect you after you hit level 40. After you hit level 40, you have max level traders. And the only thing you need experience for after that is um, some of the cosmetics from Ragman. So if you, if you want to flex over your mates on what level you are, get the library up as quickly as possible and you'll actually level up faster uh, and don't tell them and then you'll have this like little perk over them. The other part of it is the group of skills leveling boost for the practical skills. Now this is stuff like search. Um, I've got to do off, can't remember off the top of my head. So practical skills, you've got search, surgery, covert movement, mag drills, and then your two hideout skills. So it actually helps you level up your hideout faster as well. So getting that one done and then you'll level up your hideout faster. And then yeah, so covert movement if you play a lot lot more sneaky bricky like it will uh it will uh make you a lot quieter and this one will level up a lot faster by having the uh library done search skill is also something that you'll level up pretty quickly quite passively 
Right, so that's the library out of the way. Um, moving over to the med station. Now, this one will help you out if you're getting really stuck on, say, getting a founding raid Ledex or a founding raid a defibrillator, which is this one uh, for the quest. So it's definitely worth getting at least a med station level two for the defib. Um, you also got the CMS kits, if I'm not mistaken. No, there's no CMS kits. All right. Um, so yeah, you got the defib there. The other thing is like, if you get to med station level three, I think it is, you then can make the Ledex. So it's there as an option if you want to. I uh, generally, my go-to one, and it will make you the most amount of profit if you want to sell it on the flea market, is the pile of meds. Um, I make the pile of meds, and then I also make uh, grizzlies. They do sell for a little bit of profit, but um, generally, I just want to... Actually, no, generally, they don't sell for profit, but sometimes they do fluctuate in price. I just do grizzlies because I make meds. Make meds, turn them into grizzlies. And it's just purely for leveling up the crafting skill because I want to make more videos with more information and I can give you really good examples. So I put a lot of effort into leveling up my skills this way. Now, um, for the booze generator, you need a you need two sugars and the super water, and that makes you moonshine. Now, the moonshine you want to use in your scav case, but um, if you sell them on the flea market, it doesn't really come out as much of a profit. I generally, it really comes down to the day. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And the problem is it's the flea market fees that really cost you right there. The water uh, collector, I've already spoken about this one. The water filter, it slowly gets consumed and it makes you super water. Uh, you will definitely make profit from this. So you should always be having this running every time you're playing the game. Um, and you should always be updating it and that. But the uh, thing is, the higher level your hideout management skill gets and your crafting skill, this also makes it so that you are making more profit from the water filter. Moving over here, illumination is just purely for uh, like a money sink in the hideout to upgrade other things. Now with the Bitcoin farm, so it's about seven hours per Bitcoin with 50 graphics cards in there. Now I get this question a lot. Do I put in 50 graphics cards and should I buy my graphics cards straight away? And the answer is yes. The The thing about this is um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give an overall at the end of this. So just hang out because there's a little bit more explaining to this. But the, the thing is, if you put 50 graphics cards in one week into the wipe, you are going to make so much more money than someone who's just putting in 50 graphics cards right now, two months into the wipe. I put all my 50 in a week into the wipe. I've had now seven extra weeks in you getting three and a half Bitcoins a day and they're skyrocketing in prices right now. There's a reason why I have 80 million rubles and it's just, I'm just memeing half the days. I'm not even doing money runs. The Bitcoin farm is doing all the, all the heavy lifting and I just supplement my runs every now and then by just actually trying to survive and make extra money in that. So it's it's. I'm going to add this point right here that if you're watching this video and you're like, I'm probably not going to play a lot for the wipe. I'm probably only going to play maybe 20, 30 hours. Then probably don't even waste your time with the hideout at all. Just focus on having some fun, memeing about, going into raids with your mates. But if you actually are trying to progress in this wipe and trying to get as far as you can through it, get that cap of container and make a heap of like stacks of rubles, then you should definitely be upgrading your hideout in, I guess, in line with your actual leveling and your questing. So um, if you've watched the raid series, you'll see that I've actually got a process now where I go five episodes in a row, so five hours of questing. Then I do five episodes, slash, which is five hours of uh, money making and then i do five hours of pvp i would suggest that you don't have to do it exactly like that but do a couple of hours of questing and then go all right let's just make some money for the next couple of hours and you just go more of a budget loadout with the full intention of just avoiding combat all, all, all together and just getting out with as much money as you can you can do it with a couple of mates and you can all just run around and try and grab all the loot and doing scav runs every time they come off cooldown uh go into interchange and go to all those barter items and you'll make heaps of money that way Keep in mind any item inside your hideout that you need to up, uh, to upgrade the hideout and um, you can put him on a list and then if you die, have it inside your container so then you, you don't have to buy it off the flea and you, you've already got a use for it. So it's not just vendoring and going to waste. Um, so yeah, Bitcoin farm. The one thing I suppose I didn't talk about with the uh, the Intel center that's actually quite, quite big is the scav cooldown timer. If you use a lot of scav runs, it reduces your, your scav runs by 50%. I think it's default 20 minutes so mine's down to nine minutes something and that's because of the hideout management skill quest money reward boost it doesn't really do much once you get all your quests done so it's handy um insurance return time means nothing to me because you just play the game when you play it and insurance is there if you don't forget it 
and then the flea market commission uh, reduction. I don't know if that flea market commission reduction is, is actually in the game. It feels like everything on the flea market is expensive to put up at the moment, but hey, it is what it is. Now, that's pretty much all I've got. Um, one last thing before I do finish up. In tasks, in notes, you'll see I've got notes here. Um, I use these notes quite often on my hardcore series. Uh, you can literally write whatever you know. So say I need like five times, I know, CPU fans. And you go save. And then you're in the middle of raid and like, shit, what did I need to get? You literally just go like tab, go to your, uh, go to your, your tasks tab up here. And then you just go notes. And you can just quickly have a look and go, oh, I still need five more CPU fans. It's just that I use it all the time in the hardcore when I'm trying to upgrade the hideout. Um, and it's just a little cheeky way you can do it. I like doing it that way, but you don't have to. Anyway, I've tried to smash out as much information into this video as I can for you. And hopefully you've actually learned something and there's some, something beneficial. Um, I'm not trying to deter you from upgrading the hideout, but if you're not going to play the game a lot, probably avoid it. But if you are trying to get to the Kappa container, I would highly suggest getting that hideout upgraded as quickly as possible, particularly getting stuff like the Bitcoin farm uh, cranking. That's going to make you as much, oh, it's going to make you a lot more money and you'll, uh, you'll definitely reap the benefits of it. Uh, and it's not just the Bitcoin farm, also the other crafts as well will also help you out. Anyway, guys, that is the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, please take the time to just write any sort of comment to say comment for the YouTube algorithm and like uh, for the uh, YouTube algorithm. It really does help out, help out with discoverability and share it with some friends if they're actually curious about uh, if the hideout's worthwhile. I try to put out at least two guides a week and I've got the raid series going out, the hardcore series. We've got stream highlights. We've got lots of videos. It's three videos a day at the moment. Um, and I'm actually currently taking a couple days off to spend time with my wife. So I've been recording like crazy so you guys can enjoy uh, the YouTube content whilst I'm not live streaming. But if you are interested in checking out my live stream, I do generally stream every day of the week when I am home, um, which is nearly all the time. So uh, feel free to pop over to my live stream, say good day, ask me any questions. I try my best to answer as many as I can. And uh, it can get quite busy at times, but I do appreciate you guys popping in and saying good day. Um, and lastly, guys, I'll see you next time.